Hey dolls, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my cousin here and we're going to be doing some braids I've been seeing trending on social media. If you guys follow up on braid pages, I'm sure you've probably seen this. It's nothing too complicated. It's about 10 to 15 stitch braids, but they're done in a design style, which is kind of new, it's kind of different, but there's not much I can really train on this video so i'm gonna be not talking as much but while i'm not talking i'm gonna throw in some sound some music so you guys can listen and watch like you used to because you know when my channel first started out we were just i just played music i didn't even talk back then so <laughs> this might be something similar but i will pop in and out when i feel like there's something i can train you guys on or, or speak about when it comes to the design but for now you know i already started with my famous middle part this part is going to be the base because we are going to be, end up using this in the style and it's going to be our guide and then you know, so if you guys just want to see how this style is done so you can recreate it for yourself or for your kids or for your friend or if you're a braider for your clients, whatever it is, here it is, you guys. And again, I'm going to be popping in and out as I feel to say, you know, if there's anything I can give you on this. But for the most part, it's just typical stitch braids in a design. So it's mostly kind of watch and learn type of feel in this video. For this video, I am using the Meat Braids Gel. I'm using the Duchess Braids Precision Comb. That's how my parts are so sharp. And what else am I using? The hair she brought is Expressions Hair. I do like that hair. And yeah, pretty much. And some alligator clips from Amazon. And my wristband, what's on my hand is my silicone wristband that's going to hold the jam because I hate having a jam on the back of my hand. I like to put them on a wristband and just pull from it. It's easy. It saves me a ton of time being able to have access to the gel right there on my wrist and not having to dip my hand in the jar every time that I need some gel. So that is what the wristband is for. The the precision comb is for and everything can be found on my website with the exception of the gel and the exception of the alligator clips but I will link those in the description or the comment section for you guys. Okay, so now here we are at the design portion of the style where the braids kind of start halfway 
through they're going in the opposite direction at first and then it takes a turn and starts going backwards so it's almost like a hook kind of look and that is just the style now it's i'm just gonna alternate the direction uh at each turn it just doesn't have much symmetry to this style it's just kind of like yeah, as you guys can see further on in the style is just kind of doing its own thing so yeah this is how it's going to start off as a hook so as you can see i'm cleaning up this part right now and that's where the braid is going to start at and then it's going to curve around at the front and go backwards As you guys can see, this has that boomerang look to it. And so we're gonna just keep alternating that style by just kind of parting at an angle first and then parting the other side going backwards or going to the back. One thing I wanna note about um, her hair is she has a smaller nape. So that is the size in the back of her neck. So when you're working with a client or someone that has a smaller name, which means they don't have like a big neck space, you kind of have to size up your braids to ensure that they all fit at the back without being jumbled up. So this is what I work on here with her is just as I go back, the braid gets extremely the space that I need to braid gets extremely smaller and this is why the middle part is important because the middle part is going to let me know like hey like <laughs> you need to make sure you have enough space back there to do this hair and don't come over on if you're you start in the middle at the top don't come over on the other side you know trying to take up space like yeah you got to make everything fit on that side and then make everything fit on the other side so that's why the first braid that i did on her right side that's why i kind of had it fall short i didn't fully take it all the way to the back because i know that she has a short nape and that's why that braid fell right there behind her ear like that and then go all the way down to the back of her neck because we don't have the space back there. We don't have the real estate. So one thing you can do when you're doing smaller braids for someone that has a nape that is smaller and there's nothing wrong with that, y'all. I mean, there's nothing wrong with I don't want me saying this for anyone to feel like, oh, is the nape being short a bad thing. It's not. Um, but. What you can do is most definitely put a row or two of knotless box braids back there if you're going to be doing small um, small braids going to the back. So she didn't have that many small braids going to the back and I knew it would fit without jumbling up. So that's why I didn't put any layer of knotless box braids back there to start so but that is my recommendation for you if you're doing some straight backs and the person has really a uh, small nape where the braids always end up jumbling up on top of each other you want to do at least one or two rows of small knotless box, box braids and that's going to not only give the hair volume but it's going to give you a lot more space to work with when you once you start braiding the hair back
but you always want to be proportional. You always want to think forward when braiding. Just don't think about just that one braid. You always want to think 10 steps ahead so that things like this don't happen after the fact. So you don't want to get halfway and you're like, oh my God, like all this hair is not fitting. You kind of have to assess the head before you even jump into it. And that is one of the main things that I do is once I see the client, you guys see I'm like fluffing the hair out and stuff. Yeah, that looks great for the camera in front of every video. But at the same time, what I'm doing is basically assessing their head. And that's one of the main things you need to do is once your client sits in your chair, you assess the size of their head uh, compared to the style that they want. Because the picture that she shows me of the style that she wants the, the person's head is much bigger than hers. So I knew right off the bat, like, okay, like all the braids that that person has in their head is not going to fit <laughs> on her head. And so I kind of had to give her the same style, but kind of downsize it a little bit. So I don't have the picture that she sent me, but I just kind of wanted to let you guys know, like sometimes you have to assess the person's head size and the stuff as small as the nape and you know their hairline all that stuff to ensure that you can give them the style that they want also like if it was a style that I knew I she was adamant about that I couldn't downsize and still make it look good I would have to tell her like all these words are not going to fit in your head and it's not going the style might not look the same that's something to think about when you're doing any type of braids and as you guys can see I pulled out her edges because she loves her baby hair that even the picture that she showed me was filled with like you know the really cute like exaggerated baby hair so that's what we're doing today not only that like I pulled the hair out because one I don't want to pull too much of her edges into the braids because I don't want it to to damage you know damage it that's what I'm doing now is I've assessed the size of her head and as you can see I'm going back to the back and this braid itself also is going to stop short. This is your time to take advantage of the hair that's right behind the ears. And these are the braids that you can stop short. As in you don't have to braid them all the way back. As you can see, it stopped short right behind her ear. Because we don't have space back there. Because then they're going to be on top of each other. So now I'm at the last stretch of the hair. I know I said I wasn't going to talk that much. But you know you know I had something to say <laughs> but we're on the last braid right now and yeah everything is falling in place she everything's gonna fall straight back there and not look too crowded back there so yeah All 
All right, dolls, so this is the final look. We did plan on putting some bees at the end of her braids, but we ran out of time. She had her ride waiting for her, so she's gonna go ahead and do that herself. We didn't end up dipping the ends because, again, we ran out of time. But this is the final look of the design style. If you guys have seen it going around, let me know. If you haven't and this is new to you and you never heard of this before, also let me know in the comments. Bye.